In this video, we've got new brain measurement tools to test different cognitive supplements like the Nootropics Alpha Brain and Magic Mind, which both claim to enhance your memory, focus, mood, and overall cognitive processing speed, but I wanna know if there's any truth to these claims. I get asked about brain health supplements like these all the time, which doesn't surprise me because studies show that over half of all American adults are concerned about issues with their memory and focus as they age. And over 25% of people report taking supplements advertised to help with these symptoms. Supplements like these can be really attractive as a way to improve any brain fog symptoms that you might have, but if you take a look at these studies published on brain health supplements, most of them show their evidence through these outdated measurement systems, like subjective scales that can be quite unreliable. Basically, the test subjects are just filling out questionnaires before and after taking the supplement to see if there's any change in their responses. Well, over the past two years, we've seen an explosion in low cost and clinically validated brain measurement tools that can be used at home to change how these studies are done. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I'm testing out different brain health supplements with these brain data tracking devices. And I think you'll be really surprised to see what I found. If you remember way back to 2015, that's about when Alpha Brain from Onnit started to really take off in the biohacking space for two main reasons. Number one, Joe Rogan endorsed it as a brain booster that he supposedly takes before his podcasts to improve his cognitive performance. And number two, he was able to cite a small but randomized control trial that not only showed that Alpha Brain from Onnit increased performance of the test subjects on memory, attention and mental flexibility tests, but also showed changes in their EEG brainwave patterns on at least 20 of the subjects they tested. In my opinion, this just shows me the power of these brain measurement tests and the credibility that they can bring when paired, especially with celebrity endorsement. There were two main brain measurements they did in these studies. The first is what is called an evoked related potential test or an ERP, which is a spike in brainwave activity that happens during attention and reaction testing. The second test that they did is the peak power within the alpha frequency band of the subject brainwaves, otherwise known as peak alpha. They found within the ERP that a certain wave called P3A, which tracks attention, was faster in the test subjects that took alpha brain. They also found that the peak power within the alpha band also increased in those that took alpha brain. This measurement has been associated in the literature with increased working memory, speed of information processing, faster visual reaction times, and overall brain health. Now what's really exciting and what this video is all about is now we can do these measurements at home with devices like the Muse headband and the Neurable headphones to see if we're getting similar effects on our own brains. In this video, I did a comparison of alpha brain days to magic mind days, two days without nootropics, to see if there was any difference between the nootropics and days that I didn't take nootropics and to see if there was any difference between alpha brain and magic mind. Nootropics like like Alpha Brain and Magic Mind are basically biologically active blends with a long ingredient list from various sources to include green tea and mushroom extracts. Alpha Brain comes in the form of pills, whereas Magic Mind is this tasty green shot drink. They both affect a variety of neurotransmitters in the brain, but are most commonly associated with increased acetylcholine levels, which are key in affecting levels of alertness. One key difference that I would note is that Alpha Brain uses alpha GPC to increase acetylcholine levels, whereas Magic Mind uses a proprietary acetylcholine production precursor that they've called cognizant acetylcholine. There's also compounds like L-theanine and green tea extract within these nootropic supplements to help smooth out the stimulation effect and lessen any associated anxiety that they might cause. How these ingredients and blends are balanced really affects how you feel when you take each nootropic. Now to compare Alpha Brain to Magic Mind, I did keep track of my focus, anxiety, happiness, motivation, energy levels, optimism, and creativity on days that I did take the supplements and on days that I didn't. I also kept track of any side effects and the overall feeling of stimulation I got from these brain supplements. So those are the subjective parts that I documented quantitatively by doing one out of 10 measurements based on a questionnaire that I designed myself, as well as my own gestalt of the feeling that these gave me from my psychiatric training that I'll share here in the video. But what's really exciting is I also took brain data measurements. 
The main measurements that I focused on in this video were the peak alpha measurements from the Muse and sustained attention for focus and flow state from the Neurable headphones. The Neurable headphones use machine learning that focuses in on levels of alpha, low beta, and other parts of the EEG spectrum that are sustained over long durations of focus, and they're able to track distractions as well as your attention span waivers. So let's start on how I actually felt on these substances to put the data into context. It was easy enough to pop alpha brain pills first thing in the morning. Overall, I found that it did increase my energy levels and motivation, but it also tended to make me have somewhat racing thoughts with some irritability, and it had a main side effect of decreased appetite and nausea throughout the day. I don't tend to eat breakfast in the morning these days because I do intermittent fasting, so the alpha brain was actually pretty rough on my stomach. And overall, even though I had increased energy and motivation, it just made me feel a little edgy and irritable, and almost like I was overstimulated because I had some jaw clenching from it. Almost like I was more impulsive and seeking even more stimulus, like playing video games. Kind of like a mild version of what you would feel on Adderall or a stimulant like that. And the Magic Mind drinks were actually really tasty. I both enjoyed the taste and aftertaste of the matcha, honey, and turmeric. I also found that Magic Mind increased my energy and motivation levels, but it was much more of a smooth burn. Overall, I just felt more calm and relaxed on Magic Mind compared to Alpha Brain, and the side effect profile was much better. I didn't have any nausea, and my appetite was intact. I didn't have those racing thoughts, and I didn't have the jaw clenching or the jitters. And on the positive side of things, I just felt more creative overall with Magic Mind. It was like I was able to get in flow state better and have really good ideas without kind of just having these really jittery racy thoughts. And with Magic Mind, I was able to just plow through the day's activities and really felt great about the work that I accomplished without feeling edgy and burnt out by the end of the day. With Alpha Brain, I did feel a little spun out and anxious and spent by the end of the day. As you can see by these numbers, my focus was a little bit better on Magic Mind because I wasn't overly stimulated and jumping from task to task. My anxiety was noticeably lower and I did feel more happy and motivated. But the thing that I think was the real key difference was the creativity aspect of it. Now launching into the brainwave findings to test the effects of Magic Mind and Alpha Brain on my brainwave activity, I took Muse headband peak alpha measurements soon after I woke up at 6 a.m. and another peak alpha measurement at around 12 noon after I had taken the nootropic at about 9 a.m. I did make sure that my increase in peak alpha wasn't just due to me waking up throughout the day. So on days where I didn't take nootropics, my peak alpha, if I didn't get very good sleep the night before, it would be about 9.4 hertz. And then in the afternoon, it was 9.5 hertz. So it was pretty consistent without the nootropics. I found that alpha brain actually increased my alpha peak from 9.3 to 9.7 hertz for a total increase of 0.4 hertz. Whereas Magic Mind increased my alpha peak from 9.3 hertz to 10 hertz for a total increase of 0.7 hertz, which is almost twice as much of an increase in my peak alpha levels with Magic Mind compared to Alpha Brain. But I did notice that this paled in comparison to the restorative quality of getting a good night of sleep that I've seen increase my peak alpha levels from 9.3 hertz to 10.2 hertz for a total of 0.9 hertz increase over one night. I also tracked my focus duration through the afternoon from 12 noon to 4 p.m. with the focus tracking neural headphones. I found that my attention span and focus tended to be better on Magic Mind according to the data compared to Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain showed me getting 102 focus points during the day with the best attention span of eight minutes with no distractions during video editing. Whereas with Magic Mind, I got 170 focus points with the best attention span during video editing of 17 minutes. And during script writing, I had a 47 minute attention span spree without any distractions on Magic Mind. So overall, I felt better on Magic Mind compared to Alpha Brain. It also seemed to increase my peak alpha levels more than Alpha Brain did. And according to the Neurable headphones, my attention was sustained for longer periods of time on Magic Mind compared to Alpha Brain. And I even felt more creative on Magic Mind. I wonder if Alpha Brain caused me to be too stressed and increase my cortisol levels 
which is known to reduce creativity. Perhaps that cool and mellow feeling on Magic Mind helps you power through the day, but also helps you relax into your thoughts and have really good ideas without feeling overstimulated. I'm thinking maybe it has to do with the matcha green tea extract that they put into Magic Mind, which has more of a calm attention effect. Whereas with Alpha Brain, they use Alpha GPC to soup up the acetylcholine neurotransmitter levels, but they also block the breakdown of acetylcholine with compounds called Huperzine A and Bacopa Moneri, which can be a little overpowering if kept unchecked by other compounds. Also, I'm not sure what's in that proprietary acetylcholine precursor in Magic Mind, but perhaps that could have an effect as well. One thing to note is that Magic Mind does cost about twice as much as Alpha Brain does, with about five to $6 per two fluid ounce bottle, compared to only $2 for two pills of Alpha Brain. And if I was taking Alpha Brain on a regular basis, I probably would only take one capsule because two was just too much for me in terms of side effects and feeling overly stimulated. So if I was taking it, that would be about a dollar a day. And that brings up a good point. I saw the most increase in peak alpha when I had had a poor night of sleep with a low peak alpha score that next morning. Peak alpha is really variable depending on how much sleep you got. So on those days where I saw the biggest increases is where I had pretty low scores of 9.3 hertz. And by getting up at four in the morning, I was able to get 9.3 hertz as a starting point for both alpha brain and magic mind days to really have a consistent starting point to see how much that would raise my peak alpha during the day. And that's actually pretty consistent with what's seen in the literature. People that start out with a deficit in peak alpha due to traumatic brain injury, depression, ADHD, their scores will actually increase more compared to a healthy control based on interventions like doing cognitive tasks. There's a lot of other tests that I want to incorporate into these types of videos. I'm going to be doing ERP testing and frontal lobe blood flow testing on future videos like these. I do have devices for those tests, but they're currently undergoing clinical validation by the teams that created them, and they should be ready in a couple of months. I'm also really excited to test these brainwave metrics with other supplements and do things like sauna and cold plunge. I want to do a lot more biohacking on this channel, so be sure to subscribe for future videos like that. I know these aren't gold standard randomized control trial data. Take the results with a grain of salt, but this is how exploratory research is done and could lead to more rigorous studies in the near future. So overall, I felt like Magic Mind was better nootropic for me, even though it does cost twice as much. I think that nootropics are helpful for short bursts in attention and cognitive performance, but you don't want to use them every day. There's probably a decreasing effect. And I did notice that when I took Alpha Brain every day for six months back when I was in the Navy, I didn't have as much side effects, but it probably probably wasn't affecting my brain as much either. And they'll definitely increase mental performance for a few hours and increase the brainwave patterns that are associated with the increased performance and brain health. But as we saw in the data, the most dramatic impact on my performance and brain metrics was getting a good night of sleep. And the nootropics tended to have the most effect only when I was sleep deprived. So the take home message is that you really shouldn't try to cover up bad sleep exercise and bad diet habits and need to make those healthy habits the foundations of your brain health. As far as brain health supplements go, I think that these nootropics that temporarily boost neurotransmitters over a couple of hours fall into the short-term brain health, whereas compounds like omega-3 fish oil fall into the midterm and long-term effects that are going to benefit you day-to-day, -day, every day for years to come. I have compiled a PDF to show what brain health supplements I'm taking on a daily basis, and you can find that link below. I found a really great supplement company with people that come from the old school bodybuilding.com, which I really enjoyed over the years. And I'm partnering with them to bring a tech for psych brain health supplement line that I'm going to be offering starting in April of this year. And if you'd like more information on the Muse Peak Alpha measurement or the Neurable Focus tracking, click one of these videos here and I'll see you on the other side.